This week's Four Questions Journalist Spotlight is brought to you by Lefts Atlanta Media, Atlanta's best journalist database. Subscribe at leftsatlantamedia.com. Welcome to another edition of our Four Questions Journalist Spotlight. We are talking with Mike Jordan today, who is uh, st- recently started a new position at the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about uh, a little bit about some of the th- other things that he's doing for other publications and uh, other writings. And uh, don't let me forget to talk about why you're wearing that T-shirt, at least why I think you're wearing that T-shirt. We'll talk about that. And, uh, and then we, and then I'm going to ask you uh, what's the coolest thing about Mike. So we'll start with that. All right. Good morning. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you, Mitch. Uh, again, glad to be back on the show. Uh, glad to have some new stuff to talk about, too. Uh, you know, you would have brought me back too soon, and I probably would have just been trying to figure out something cool to say. But I think I might have a little <laughs> bit more this time. Mike's always got Mike's always got cool things to say. All right, well, let's start with tell me tell me about your what your your new role and your new title at the AJC and what what that is and what that's all about. Yeah, thanks for asking. Um, my new role is a uh, senior editor over Black culture reporting at the AJC. And that is a team uh, that is being built into a standalone brand. In some places you would call them verticals. Uh, Folks would use that term. At the AJC, we've been calling it a franchise, but it is its own uh, brand that we are creating where we will cover Black culture, of course, from Atlanta. So, you know, locally, but the fact that Atlanta's culture is, you know, very regional just in general, and that we import and export culture globally. I mean, we can cover Black culture uh, on all three levels, local, national, international. But uh, we're definitely going to expand slowly out from the city into the region. And what I mean by covering Black culture was actually a question I asked uh, everyone during the recruiting process when they reached out to me, was what that meant to the AJC. And, um, you know, it's, it's an opportunity for the newspaper to speak to a demographic, a very large demographic in Atlanta, uh, and to hear from that audience as well about, you know, things that are going on beneath the surface or outside of the usual sort of focus area of breaking news and some of those areas where you just might have a Black person or something that affects the Black community. This is an opportunity to get a little bit deeper into uh, those stories, uh, to find more of them, and to also deliver them in new ways, uh, not just in the storytelling that you might find in online articles, printed paper articles, which was, of course, the AJC still prints daily. Um, I've, heard, I've heard that. Yeah, they're, they're using every single day. You have this new technology. It's like called paper or something like that that it comes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can touch it. It's tactile, man. It's amazing. That is, yeah, that is yeah. so cool. I, I think yeah. that's going to take off. Yeah, man, we'll see. Hey, look, the, <laughs> it's it, it's definitely driving some revenue, so no one's going to say, let's put this stuff away. <laughs> That's take right. those checks. That's but, right. um, also, you know, again, we're doing events. Uh, we've been having movie screenings uh, for uh, kind of classic Black culture films, and we've got a few more of those lined up. One in June, actually, June 25th at Plaza Theater to see Love and Basketball, classic uh, movie. So, you know, we're doing fun things like that. So it's reaching out to the audience, letting the audience reach us, but showing them that we are going to show up in ways that maybe the AJC hadn't focused in so much on these stories and on the community and on the culture that comes out of this community. So food and beverage, um, music, uh, theater, any anything, all, all of that and, and more? You're hitting it exactly. We will definitely do food coverage. Um, We will have entertainment, of course. I mean, the city, not just with all of the great film stuff going on, but music business here. I mean, we just lost, uh, sadly, Rico Wade, who is responsible for discovering OutKast. And he put that entire movement of Southern hip hop from Atlanta on the global map. So, I mean, these are stories that... In order to cover them correctly, you need to really focus in. And it's one thing to say Rico Wade passed, but it's another thing to really talk to all the people and go into all the ways and means that he did change that culture. But yeah, we'll do uh, all sorts of areas of coverage. We're going to talk about events. We're, of course, going to look at politics. We're, of course, going to look at health and how that's uh, intertwined with culture. So every single thing, that's, that's my point of view, is there is no area of coverage that Black culture does not touch and interact with. So we yeah. will go everywhere and do everything. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned health. I mean, that 
that that's a I, I had when I didn't initially think about that, but absolutely, yeah, I see so many stories about rural health issues versus urban and black mortality, black women child mortality, mortality rate, child mortality rates. Uh, you know, issue, I have a a doctor uh, who's in uh, in Noonan who is black and he treats. You know, he has really insights on you know some of the issues he hits when he's treating black patients when he's talking to black patients. So that that's 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 huge. Yeah, that's 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 a good one. I'm glad you guys are touching that too. So does does the, does the team overlap with the other teams at the AJs? Like you know, the reporters who cover health or or entertainment, that kind of thing. It's kind of a back and forth a little bit. Well, it's it's uh it's inclusive of those folks. So we do have contributors who are directly under other managers and editors on other teams. So yes, we do uh interact with health. Um, you know, and what we'll do is we'll pick up some of those stories. Again, uh we had uh Maurice Garland, who's a long time, very respected uh culture journalist, uh did a lot of hip hop stuff, but has gone beyond that. But he's really leaned into uh health coverage as well. And what we're doing is, of course, not just covering it and saying, you know, these are things that you do hear about the high um, maternal mortality rates, the hypertension, the diabetes, all of these things, environmental racism uh, in some ways. You, those are those stories. But the other side of that is, well, how do we address them? And culturally, are there ways that can motivate people to kind of come in and 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 make changes in their life health oriented and, you know, move into healthier spaces, healthier frames of mind, healthier bodies. So uh, we have folks like him who are freelance, um, but we also have uh, folks from the business team. Uh, Mirtha Donastor uh, contributes to our team quite often. We have entertainment reporters like DeAsia Page and Gavin Godfrey, who are, you know, very well known and highly respected for their coverage of music and culture and entertainment. Um, and then we let uh, some of those other teams borrow our folks. Actually, this weekend, one of our reporters, Christopher Daniel, is helping out with the entertainment team to cover Shaky Knees. So, you know, we all work together. Uh, I work with food, of course, a lot. I've written about Keith Lee for the AJC, and I'm not on the food team. I lead <laughs> right, another right. team. So all of those things, we're working together because these are stories that we share as a news organization. Yeah, Mirtha's, her her stuff is great. I, I really yeah. like the, her focus on Black entrepreneurship and the Black business community, uh, small businesses. I mean, she's. I think that that's been a great addition to to what the paper has been covering since since she joined. I guess last year, maybe I think is when she started something like that. Mm -hmm. um so are you are you still writing for other publications too when you in your free time <laughs> no not really i mean i'm uh i'm definitely there are opportunities to do partnerships when i first joined there was a story left over uh from my time being a consistent freelancer at eater.com was basically ready to run and so we figured out how to get that story in the AJC as well as get that over at Vox Media. Um, gotcha. And so we we definitely, there there's room for partnerships and some that have been in discussion. But yeah, I'm focusing on this because I want to make sure that we are putting out a quality product. And some of that is going to require not just me as an editor, uh, but me as a journalist. And so, you know, there's certain stories I'm going to be told about because a lot of folks know that I've been at the Wall Street Journal and the Guardian and National Geographic and Atlanta magazine and so on and so forth. And so from that, from the amount of years I've done it, there's going to be things that come to me that I can share with people. But sometimes these folks are like, no, Mike, I'm telling you because I want you to write it. Can you write it? And I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know, but so we're balancing out our schedules and getting our bandwidth together. But I, I love being at the AJC and uh, I'm really excited about where we're going and growing. Well, you answer my next question about kind of some of the other places you have worked with in the past. You mentioned that Guardian, uh, Atlanta Magazine, um, Eater, New York Times. Who are we forgetting? Any, Never the Times. No, Never, actually, oh, not, not the Times? Okay. Not, no, yet. not yet. Not yet. I, Maybe. I, I, yeah, I'm I figured they know listen. who I am. They're listening. They're listening. I, I, I figure they know who I am. <laughs> I, did get, I did get an offer to write for GQ after I joined the AJC, so I had to turn that one down, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've written for uh, Rolling Stone several times about, you know, elections and politics and how the entertainment industry uh, has a pretty significant influence on what happens in uh, state politics in Georgia. Um, so I've done I've done stuff for a whole lot of people. 
And the reason I've done that is because I like to look at all stories through the lens of culture, because I think that's a way to make people pay a little bit more attention is if you come at it through that angle, it doesn't some some people may think they're not interested in a topic because they feel that they need to be better versed or somewhat of a an, of someone who's interested in that type of coverage already. So, you know, real estate. But I also there's another one I wrote for Curb mm -hmm. here in Atlanta for many years. Um, and I love doing that, but I would always find the cultural conversation around real estate and gentrification and new development and how all of these things affect culture. So it's my sort of uh, sneak entry into a lot of topics that I think audiences would care about more if they knew how it culturally affected them. Yeah, I mean, real estate development, I mean, there's all the conversation about the Beltline and, you know, how it's the uh, development along the Beltline belt line drives out people who are have been there for years, but, you know, now can't afford it. Uh, you know, the, those those kind of conversations and the same kind of conversations happened with Atlantic Station when they were developing that and happening now with Centennial Yards is developing that. So it's a kind of an ongoing, uh, for better or for worse, <laughs> never ending conversation, right? Uh, how do you, how do you, how do you improve the city, but keep it affordable for the people who've been here for, for generations, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Okay, uh, you know, while, while I'm thinking about it, let's let's name drop so everybody knows the, the other folks who are on your team. So I know we got Mirtha, who's covering kind of small business, black small business and uh, entrepreneurship, right? Yes, and yep. who, for the business who, team. So yeah. we'll get the ball her. Shout out to Scott Truby. Thank you for allowing <laughs> us to, to use uh, great. Scott's, a, Scott's a generous. Team. Scott's a generous guy. You know, he's, he's a shares. great guy. He's, he shares. He shares. Yeah. I mean, that's what yeah. we like about him. All right, who, who, what else we got? We got Ernie. We do. We have Ernie Suggs. He's on my team. He is a senior reporter, as everyone knows. So uh, he is also on Black Culture. Uh, we have Naja Parker, who has been at the AJC for quite a while. She's on. Uh, she's our news and video correspondent, and also uh, <clears throat> does a lot of other uh, stuff around some reporting as well. On you know whenever we need her, we have Christopher Daniel, who's a longtime freelance journalist and a professor at uh, Georgia State University, Clark Atlanta University, and Morehouse for journalism. Um, and again, we also get to uh, have uh, Gavin Godfrey, who was a longtime creative loafing editor and uh, worked with all sorts of other people. Um, so he is on the entertainment side, but works with Black culture very closely. Did he um, come over? Page. Did he come over from? Was it, was he a Capital B? He had been a Capital B. Yes, okay. that's correct. Right. Yep, he was okay. the editor of the Atlanta edition. That's okay. Right. That's what I was. That's what I was thinking. All right. That's right. Yep. All right, who else? Who don't? We're gonna get who grief if we forget anybody, right? Um, Mirtha, Deasia, Gavin, uh, Ernie, um, Naja, uh, myself, Christopher, Daniel. Right now, that's about it. And again, okay. we have contracts uh, with some uh, pretty well-known journalists, so uh, we're gonna announce that very soon. They've already signed the contracts, but we want to get everybody really hyped about it. So, uh, you know, and we'll be doing a few more of those. So, we're gonna work with a lot of people who for a very long time have either, you know, occasionally freelance for some of the bigger publications and news organizations in Atlanta, but very often they were working with companies outside of Atlanta because the opportunities just weren't here. So the fact that we have this platform to cover Black culture and we know their talents, they've got major bylines, they're also, we want them to come and talk to us, and they are. So we'll be having a lot of connections to some of the better known freelancers who do black culture. And folks should recognize their names when they see them. That's great. And so we're going to see this digital. We're going to see it in print. Are you guys doing any kind of podcast or anything like that? Any, anything we like that? Absolutely are. The reason why that hasn't been uh, as frequent as of yet is because the AJC has also been hiring like crazy. So we had to get our video team up to the level <laughs> in which they can handle all of this stuff we're going to be doing. Right. So the team is growing very rapidly. We've hired a bunch of uh, producers, executive producers <clears throat> uh, and everything. So look for that for sure. That's a major part of our uh, strategy of how we're going to get out there and get those stories. And, you know, some stories just do better with video and, you know, in a city like Atlanta, that's so visual that has so much, color and vibrancy and the tree canopy and the traffic, even like all of it, you got to see it sometimes to understand it. So or, and you got to have podcast and video. Yeah. And you got to hear them. You're talking music. You want to, you want to be able to play the music, right? 
A thousand percent. Yeah. yeah. You know, All right, a too. lot of conversation around, you know, how the, there's a rap battle going on. It's from Toronto, Canada, but that whole kind of like beef, quote unquote, that they have is actually it originated from some Atlanta things. So, you know, we're tied to everything. And so those little nuances is what makes this job really cool. And, you know, making those connections for people who might have been like, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> All right. So is there a is there a, a topic or a story that you're that you this got coming up that you want to give people a heads up? Hey, we really want to cover this. Uh, maybe not necessarily something you've already got written, but something you got kind of on your radar thinking, I want to cover that. Uh, yes. Probably um, so many, right? <laughs> no, well, there are there are many. That's the, the other good thing about this job. One of many good things is uh, we will not run out of stories in Atlanta. <laughs> we will not. True. We will have stories. <laughs> uh, so but one thing, one area that we are going to be leaning into is fashion. Um, a lot of people don't see Atlanta as a market where fashion is something worth a lot of coverage. And it's actually waiting for more coverage. It, the fashion uh, industry, fashion interests, uh, just style and just all of the things that you associate with fashion in terms of journalism, we have enough of that here to cover it. And it's continuing to slowly build, but you just haven't seen a whole lot of coverage there. And I'm very interested. It's not my necessarily you know strong point i'm also not really a sports guy but again we've got a great sports team at the ajc but fashion is one of those that even the ajc has not done a whole lot of so we're going to be looking into that area and uh look for some very cool stories there because they've existed and you know that that's an area that you know if if you don't cover it it's almost like you don't know that it's there but it's in atlanta and it's growing yeah yeah it's funny i i've been around long enough that I remember when the AJC did cover a lot more fashion and I can't remember the name of the reporter, but they kind of had a reporter who was kind of, that was, that was her beat you know, in addition to other things. It wasn't just fashion, but, but uh, they were, they were covering that. Like, I'm going back 25 years or so, but anyway. Mm -hmm. All right. So speaking of fashion, tell us about James Beard. Cause he got the shirt on. I do. Uh, yes. I found out just a few days ago on the 30th of April, that I have been uh, named a finalist for the second year in a row for a James Beard uh, Foundation Award for media. And uh, it's very cool, not only because it's an honor, of course, to be nominated for an award from a, a really prestigious award from this very well-known uh, organization that, of course, deals with food, but the award that I'm nominated for, and when you're nominated in media, you're a finalist. So this is the second year I've been a finalist for the Jonathan Gold Local Voice Award. And for that award to be considered, you are looked at as seeing, have you covered a specific demographic area or different uh, geographic area uh, with voice and, you know, sort of across uh, types of coverage? So profiles, hard news, um, reviews of restaurants, um, essays. So, you know, you have to have a range of things. And I'm really proud of the nomination because it means Atlanta is getting more recognition from this sort of level. Um, so covering Atlanta and being recognized for it, I really appreciate it. And, um, you know, I, 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 I'm I've become such uh I've become so involved with food journalism that a lot of people think that's all I do. And I mean, I've, again, I do culture, I do all kinds of things, but I love writing about food because it's such a important area that you can tell so many cultural stories through. So uh, I'm I'm just really happy about it. I'll be at the awards again this year. I was there last year, and I told everybody I was like, I don't have to win because I submitted myself and got nominated. <laughs> And I had never submitted myself before, so trust me, this is a victory. So, and two so years in a row is a victory as well. Too. Yeah, so well, geez, I don't have that, that's that's awesome. So it's one of those where you're not going thinking, "Hey, maybe I, you're going in, you know, you won something, right?" Because oh, you're a finalist. I, literally, I danced yeah. like I had won all the awards <laughs> last year, and uh, I'm going to dance just as hard this year. So, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm. It is all to the good just to get two nominations. I mean, I don't, I don't know of anyone in Atlanta that's been nominated for this award in recent history so you know it's special and um again it shows last year wasn't an accident or a fluke um you know sometimes with uh journalism and you know there's been you know there's been a lot of criticism of 
the DEI, the diversity, equity, and inclusion, uh, you know, side of things. And sometimes I think people think you're given a handout when you're a black journalist, but I don't at all see it that way. I've been working really hard for a long time, so yeah. I'm not ashamed <laughs> to say I deserve this nomination. Yeah, and uh, I'm I'm really happy because of anybody who thought last year was a handout or a gimme, it's like, well, how'd I do it twice? So. I'm, I'm, I have my back on this, and if okay, I don't well, win, con- congrats. I feel that's, that's, that's awesome. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that in the coolest thing about uh, Mike Jordan category for for this uh, for this podcast. Okay, so lightning round, short short answers to this next couple of things. You don't have to don't have to go in detail, but and I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you what your favorite local restaurant is, and if you feel like that is a conflict with because you cover food sometimes, then just let me know. But if you have a favorite local restaurant, I'll, I, I'd love to I'll always like to share that. And then it, we give we tag them and give them credit too. Excellent. Um, it, I'm going to sound bougie for this, but uh, if if I could go to Mujo every day of the week, I would. I mean, it's not cheap, but right. <clears throat> they are doing something that I don't think people know is being done in Atlanta uh, with an omakase, you know, tasting, you know, menu of uh, sushi. It's phenomenal and the service is outstanding and they go out of their way to still create an experience while there is that very serene element it also has great line of music so mujo and i Boca lupo is great too and i right, get, get, get one i get one i knew you're gonna do it, I knew it. it. I knew it. <laughs> next year when we come back to you you can you can come up with the new one okay <laughs> um favorite guilty pleasure uh Twin snakes from Haribo, the gummy worms, and one is sweet and one is sour. Oh my gosh, they're great. <laughs> okay, um, local getaway. Where do you where do you like to go to chill when it's just just want to get away? Um, that's a great question. I ride my bike around East Point where I live, so it's 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 like I said, it's not one static place. It's riding through. I guess it is riding through downtown East Point on my bike. Okay. And uh, let's see. Okay, uh, favorite non-work hobby? Uh, smoking salmon on my big green egg. Oh, there you go. That's I can I can taste that now. All right. Um, okay. And then last question. So the last book you've read or last podcast you've listened to? Either either one. You can pick pick one. Okay. Uh, I would say that was likely uh reveal um the podcast uh from the center for american journal or investigative journalism but reveal they played on npr all the time and the episode was about how your smartphone may be spying on you about the pegasus uh software which spies on uh journalists and uh folks so i listened to that uh this past weekend driving back from uh the national cornbread festival in south pittsburgh tennessee Wait, National Cornbread Festival? How come I didn't know about that? Everyone ah, that says that. I'm a, I, I'll give you a tip. They should have more cornbread to be the National Cornbread Festival. All right. So it's good. It's cool. But we need them <laughs> to get a little bit more cornbread if they're going to go all out. Because everybody always gets hyped when I tell them I go. And I go annually. My family's from that area. So, uh, But yeah, I listened to that podcast on the way back to our drive. Stone Mountain used to do a chili fest. And they, yeah, they always have cornbread kind of. Along with the chili, I don't know if they still well, they do should. that. You, you need, yeah. You, if you don't have cornbread, you better have some good oyster crackers. But I'll leave that. I'll, I'll leave that kind of debate to somebody else. That could start a whole war in here. You I know? think I need to talk to Lagaya at the paper and see if she wants to put together a special section on cornbread in Atlanta. And chili, okay. <laughs> cornbread and chili. All right, that, that'll be another podcast. All right, Mike. Thank you so much for for taking some time. We've been talking with Mike Jordan with the Atlanta. Journal Constitution. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, as always, you can uh, get our archive of all of these podcasts on YouTube uh, in the video version, and then Apple Podcasts or Amazon or iHeartMedia, wherever you want to find the audio version as well. And uh, let's see, check out Mike's work in the AJC. And if you want to get access to our Lefts Atlanta Media database, go to leftsatlantamedia.com and make sure you click subscribe. If you're watching this on YouTube or wherever you're listening to it, and we will see you all in two weeks. Thanks, Mike.